All right. Well, let's uh, let's keep it rolling. We've got a uh, a good stack of people here, and I want to talk to uh, High Fish in Ohio. Uh, High Fish, what's on your mind tonight? Hi. Um, I just wanted to call and say hi to Daddy. Um, I am one of the critters from out in Ohio, and I just I I love talking about accessibility and inclusivity, and you know noticing that. Not all pets are puppies because that is what you see a lot of times. So it's so nice to hear someone put that to a platform and talk about femininity and leather spaces, which are so cis male sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's just very encouraging and very, I don't know, brings, brings a smile to my face. <laughs> hey. Yeah, well, let me ask you this since we have you on the line. How do you feel the, the culture is progressing? You know, is it fair to say that things are, are more accessible, accessible to more people now than they were five, ten years ago? Uh, even in this, like, moment of cultural snapback and, and uh, all of the, like, anger around the Obergefell case and everything that we're seeing around drag and all of these conversations around grooming, d- do you feel like we are headed in the right direction, at least when it comes to, like, leather spaces? <laughs> there are a lot of groups that are making headway and one of those would be I, I would nod back to um, the international Mr. Boot Black um, stepping out of IML and saying like hey you guys have been transphobic for the past 10 years and we're not dealing with it anymore um, because for a long time um, I feel like leather has been uh, about performative allyship mm-hmm. and not actually doing the work <laughs> Um, so, I mean, part of like my platform, um, in Cincinnati has been about doing the work and making these spaces more accessible to people that don't fall into those categories. And we talk about, you know, bringing security to drag shows and, um, Hey, you know, like being in Ohio, part of that is, do we want to talk about getting a group of gays together to go take our like concealed carry permit classes? Mm -hmm. Because that's how, like, if the police aren't going to protect you, who will, um, so, and I've just seen the community come together so much. I guess I think about like Roe v. Wade and all that happened last year. You know, there was such a outpouring of like, hey, I have a doctor. I know someone. Like, let me help you. And that's that's how I got my um, uh, bilateral self-injectomy was just by word of mouth of other people in the community saying, I know someone that will do this. Mm. There was um, a lot of underground like, hey, like, these are pro yep. women, you know, women's rights, women's opportunity to cho- to choose how and what we do with our bodies. Um, you know, at 29, when I had my hysterectomy, my ex-husband had to sign off on it. Which is is still madness and, and still remarkably common. I mean, at 29, like, you're like, oh, shit, there's this man that's controlling my life. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would. I think there's a lot of work to do still. No doubt. But I do think that places are changing. You know, the, for me, the biggest thing that I think of is like um, when you think about like the bear campgrounds. At least here in like the Midwest, they are always all male, except for like one or two days of the summer. They'll have like inclusive days, but other than that, it's all male all year. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hmm, can we like? maybe allow people of all sorts of genders instead of saying like you have to be male and what does male even mean to you? Right, yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel much more masculine when I'm in all of my like daddy danger gear. Like I feel mm-hmm. very powerful and I, I mean, you know, jokingly, like I've always been the person who's used the power tools in relationships, you know, like, I don't know. I feel very mask of center, even in my extremely high femme you know, outward appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. And and it was really, you know, we talk about inclusion, um, but I've seen more, um, you know, interpreters, sign language interpreters at different events. Yeah. You know, um, I was really surprised um, when, when I was at the LA uh, leather bear competition, this like beautiful kind of feral person just like hopped up on stage, had a crop top that was like, Hey, colonizer. And I mean, as, as (laughs) this uh, French Irish woman, you know, I'm like, 
is that like a turn on or like, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but then they started, you know, they were the sign language interpreter. And then I come to understand that they're like, you know, a PhD mental health professional, like, you know, leader in the queer community of like sacred sexuality and things like this. And I'm just like, wow, you know, I already thought they were like an interesting person and then they're a sign language interpreter. And then they're like this interesting mental health person. And I'm just like, Layers. <laughs> I've learned so much like dirty ASL from uh, going to yes. leather events. <laughs> and I really appreciate the the extreme facial expressions on the interpreter. Oh um, you know, their faces. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for giving us a call tonight. Anything else before we move on to the next call? No, thank you guys so much for the show. It's been so great to listen to. Hey, glad to hear it. Thanks for calling in.